Welcome to VLSI lecture series. I, Professor Ritesh Dolakia, is going to explain you CMOS inverter examples in this video. So here I'll be explaining you some gate examples which were there in previous examinations of gate. So let me give you first question over here. So my question is. So here in this question, CMOS inverter circuit is shown if transconductance parameters of NMOS and PMOS transistors are given as per KN and KP equals to 40 microampere per volt square and VTN and VTP that is given VTN is plus 1 and VTP is minus 1. Then we are dealing with to identify drain current. And if you observe this circuit, then in this circuit, V in is given to us that is 2.5 voltage. Then we are dealing with to identify this I current which is drain current for NMOS. This is NMOS as well as this is PMOS. So through both current I will flow right. But see I current that we can calculate only if we know in which region PMOS and NMOS is functioning. So first we need to identify in which region this PMOS and NMOS is functioning, right? So here, first we need to have voltage transfer characteristic. So here, I'll explain you voltage transfer characteristic and based on that, we will identify in which region NMOS and PMOS is there. After that, we can calculate drain current as per drain current formula, right? So see here in voltage transfer characteristic, on Y axis, we have V out and on x axis we have v in and if you see the characteristic which is there with cmos inverter then its shape will be like this now in this this is vdd voltage this is even vdd voltage this is zero voltage and at center you will be finding this is vdd divided by 2 now here there are two important points that we need to note down see from vtn terminal the line which is there with slope 1 that will be like this and from vtp terminal you see that is over here there will be a slope 1 line which will be happening like this And if you observe the region which is there in center in between these two line. So in this region you will be finding NMOS and PMOS both are in saturation region. Right. So here NMOS and PMOS that is there in saturation region. Now if you observe you see input is 2.5 voltage. Right, so this point will be there somewhere over here. See input is 2.5, VDD is 5 voltage. So input is 2.5 which is there at center means NMOS and PMOS both are there in saturation region. So this current I that we can identify as per saturation current formula. Right, so here we can say this I will be ID saturation that is what our current I and saturation current formula even if you apply it for NMOS or PMOS that will be same here I am applying it for NMOS so KN by 2 into VGSN minus VTN whole square now KN that is given 40 microampere per volt square so 40 micro means 10 to the power minus 6 divided by 2 VGSN, VGSN is input, you see VGSN is this voltage, gate VG minus VS, VG is V in that is 2.5 and VS is 0, so we can say VGSN is V in that is 2.5 minus VTN that is 1 voltage. So you see this is 20 into 10 to the power minus 6 and 2.5 minus 1 that is 1.5 and 1.5 square that is resulting into 
45 and 10 to the power minus 6 that is there. So we can say this is 45 micro ampere. So if you observe our option C is correct one. You can apply it for PMOS transistor even. So for PMOS transistor basic formula will be Kp by 2 into VGSP minus VTP right and that square. So here VGSP, VGSP will be V in minus VDD and VTP that will be minus 1 and if you place that you will be finding exact same value that is 4, 5 micro ampere right. Now we will be having second question. So let me give you second question over here. So my question is. So here in this question threshold voltage for each transistor that is 2 voltage. So this is PMOS and for this PMOS VTP that is minus 2 and this is N MOS. So for this N MOS VTN that is 2 voltage. For this circuit to work as an inverter VI must be taking the values for minus phi to 0, minus phi and phi, 0 and 3 and 3 and phi, right. So we are a little bit to identify for what values this circuit will function as inverter. Now you see here this N MOS that is connected with minus phi and this P MOS that is connected with ground. Usually you might have seen this type of circuit, right, where this P MOS is having phi voltage and this is N MOS which is having ground and we have V in. So in this situation to function this circuit as inverter you will be having input that will be 0 and plus phi to function as inverter right. So in that biasing voltages are phi and ground. So over here biasing voltage that is minus phi and ground. So to function this circuit as inverter obviously you should have minus phi and 0 voltage at input side right then you will be having this circuit functions functioning as inverter like you see if I take V in that is equals to 0 in that case you see V in is equals to 0. So if V in is 0 then you will be observing VGS so that is V in minus this terminal so that will be minus 0 minus minus phi so that will be plus phi right. So we can say this N MOS that will stay on and this PMOS that will be off and as if it is happening like this in that case as this is on our V out that will be minus 5 voltage right and as if you consider V in that is equals to minus 5 so you see V in is minus 5 in that case VGSP voltage that is there in between these two terminal. So VGSP that is V in minus this terminal. So this terminal is ground. So minus phi minus 0. So VGSP is minus phi and minus phi is lower than VTP means PMOS will be on. So here PMOS that will be on and you will be finding NMOS that will be off and in that case as this PMOS is on V out will be 0 voltage. So here you can see if V in is 0 and minus phi this circuit is functioning as inverter. So this is our correct option. Now here I would like to add some more basic points like see sometimes you can be having biasing as per this color you see if I say here I have plus 5 voltage sorry if I have minus 5 voltage over here and if I am having plus 5 voltage over here. So in that case V in that will be there as per minus 5 to plus 5 for inverter functioning right. Let me give you one more case. So if you have 
one voltage over here and if you have seven voltage over here so for inverter functioning v in that should belongs to one voltage to seven voltage then this circuit can function as inverter so this type of tricky equations may be there at that time you should not worry about this whatever biasing range is there as per that only we need to apply input voltage right and that will be making this circuit as inverter functioning of circuit i hope that you have understood this video now you can give your valuable suggestions definitely based on it in future i'll be going to make videos which will be resolving your queries so please do give your valuable suggestions thank you so